So you receive an executable like this. You run it, it's supposed to be a Fortnite loader. And then of course, in the quick settings, you have things like wall hack. By the way, this does not have to be a game cheat application. It can be anything. Maybe somebody sent you a game on Discord. One of the questions I get asked the most is how do I know if an application I open is safe? And one of the answers, of course, is to run it in a virtual machine or sandbox and see what it does. But what are you supposed to see? For example, if you look at this application, someone may look at it and think, oh, well, this is a really good cheat application. Of course, cheating is a grievous sin and you always pay for it. For example, this particular application is an info stealer, but unless I told you, you wouldn't know. As you can see, if I close it, it goes away. I open it, it has a nice GUI you might think it's safe. But the only way you can make sure, really, is to either rely on an external antivirus to tell you or analyze it yourself using things like Process Explorer. Now, this is only one of the many tools that you can use. And even then, it's not particularly easy to figure out what it's doing. If it may have, for example, an internal component. Now, one of the ways to quickly and easily analyze something like this is to use an external sandbox like any.run. So if I go ahead and create a new task here, I can drag and drop this file, select the system I want to run on. So let's say we want to run it on Windows 7, 32-bit, click on run a public task. And now we have the application executing in a sandbox, but we also have the ability to monitor all of the processes it creates dynamically along with things like connections it's making, like this one to a Russian IP. We can also see underlying child processes, and each of them are scored based on their legitimacy. So for example, this particular process seems to be pretty dangerous because it's using the task scheduler to create an auto run for other applications. It reads your internet settings, starts itself from another location. And if we keep scrolling down, there's another exe here and this seems to be a different one, depending on every time I execute it, I see a different name. Sometimes it pretends to be Windows Defender, sometimes it pretends to be some other Windows component. But in reality, it seems to be matching the rules for a DC rat, and a rat is a remote access tool. This is something the hacker can use to access your computer and control it once you've run the application. Now, often, a rat can also be used for information stealing purposes. Another warning we have is that it connects to a server without a host name. So for example, if you connect to an IP that belongs to google.com, it's gonna have the host name of google.com. But if it's a random attacker infrastructure IP, it's not gonna have a host name. So there are tons of indicators like this that you can look at in a sandbox that can tell you what the application is doing. And then you can make the judgment yourself as to whether or not you feel comfortable running it. Because often there's not a black and white answer to these questions. Is an application malware? It depends on what you mean by malware and depends on who you ask. But if you want to know exactly what the application does, a great way to do that is to run it in a sandbox like any.run. Now any.run have actually been nice enough to sponsor this video and give me full enterprise access, which allowed me to run this not only on a Windows 7 system, but on latest Windows 11 system. And as you can see, here we notice some other interesting names for the EXE that it uses. So again, here it's idle.exe inside Windows Defender. It has the exact same properties as the other application we noticed there. So the DC rat here is placed in Windows Defender slash offline idle.exe, whereas in our Windows 7 VM, we noticed this was inside, let's see, search filter host.exe inside the system32 folder. Both of them, however, make the same request to the Russian IP. So over here, idle.exe trying to connect to this same Russian IP, whereas here, search filter host.exe doing the exact same thing. Now, do I know for a fact what exactly this IP is hosting? Not really, not yet, and it's gonna take a lot more analysis to find answers to all of these questions. But based on the information we have here, I would not recommend running this application. And you can make decisions like this for yourself using a publicly available sandbox like any.run. Anyone can sign up and create a new task. If you have a free account, you're only going to be limited to Windows 7 and 32-bit, but they have pretty reasonable pricing and they even offer discounts to researchers. So I highly recommend checking them out and asking them if you are someone who likes to analyze tons of files and would like premium access.
However, once again, anyone can use this service for free. So if you come across an EXE that you just want to test in a sandbox, any.run is a great way to do it. And you can sign up using the link in description for free. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. Hopefully it gives you some insight into how I'm thinking when I'm doing malware analysis and how you should think about an application's behavior before you decide whether or not it's malicious. Hopefully that helps you with your decision making if you think you're getting hacked or something like that. For everyone waiting for the AV tests, more are on the way. We will be doing some comparisons of Kaspersky and Bitdefender for this year, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it or found it helpful. Sorry about my voice, I have a bit of cold. But thank you so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.